book of 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. We're going to talk about the anointing this morning. I think last Sunday school I talked about the, uh, I believe it was the last one, the one before I talked about the power we have through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that word power is dunamis, that's where we get a word for dynamite. And when we're endued with power from on high, the Holy Ghost that dwells within us, we receive that power. And uh, we really don't realize the power that we have. And the anointing goes along right with the power that the Holy Spirit provides for us as Christians, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we're, we're saved, then we're filled with the, with the power of the Holy Spirit, and then we're able to go out and we're able to speak his word with boldness. We're able to pray, pray in a prayer language that uh, is reserved for between you, the individual, and me and God. And that's, that's the one that uh, we can go into our prayer closet. We're supposed to go in and, we're, and it's just you, me, or it's just me and the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm praying. I may not be able to understand exactly what I'm praying, but the Holy Spirit knows exactly because he's given me the words and I'm speaking it out and I'm speaking to my Heavenly Father, speaking it direct. But I want to talk about the anointing this morning. I want to talk about how we are an anointed of God. Now, there's going to be a difference between the anointed of God and anointed of God. The anointed of God was Jesus Christ. According to Matthew chapter 26, Jesus was arrested. He was taken to uh, before the council, before Caiaphas. When he was taken before Caiaphas, Caiaphas adjured him. When you adjured, when you adjured somebody at that particular time, uh, it required you to speak by law. And he said, I adjure you that you speak and Jesus told him basically he said listen he said, he asked him if he it was the son of God he said uh, not many days you'll see the son of God appearing at the right hand of the father and he, about that time and I paraphrase that at that time as soon as he spoke it out Caiaphas grabbed his cloth his his uh, tunic and he ripped it he, he said he rent and uh, Bill Cloud did a great job here several years ago explaining how and why that happened and uh Little did whether he knew, and, and it's believed he didn't know, what happens if you rent that garment, if you rent it as a high priest, the authority has been taken away from you. And he rent that, whether he knew it or not, the authority went to Jesus because he was now after the order of Melchizedek. I had to throw all that in to get to where I'm at now. I, did, I know I did that fast. There has been several teachings on that, but I had, to, I had to talk about that first. We are an anointed of God. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 says, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Christ, Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received from him abideth in you, and ye need not any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you give us this day. And Father, again, we thank you, Lord, for coming together. We ask your anointing to go forth on your word. We know that we'll not, we'll not return into your void. And we thank you, Lord, that we're able to accomplish whatever we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The, the title is the, We Are an Anointed of God. <clears throat> and John here, he's writing. He said, and if you look at verse 26, some people take this a little bit out of context. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. John's telling you there's people there that's trying to get you to err from the truth. Just like there are today, they're trying to get, turn you from what you know to be the truth. We, the truth is in us. And remember in verse 20 it says, You have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That Greek word there is charisma, or charisma. That's where we get a word charisma from. We have, that, we have that unction. We have charisma from the Holy One. We have the Holy Spirit giving us what words we need to be saying. Uh, 
See, every one of us has an anointing upon our lives. If you're, if you're a Christian, you have an anointing. If you have been born again, you have an anointing to speak the words that the Lord gives you to speak in due time and due season. Well, I'm not a minister. Well, you don't have to be a minister. That's not part of being in the ministry. The ministry is a different calling. It's a different word. It's a different time. It's a different speaking. Wherever you go, whatever you see, we're all called to be witnesses. It says we are witnesses. That's the Great Commission. When Once you get saved, you become a witness. Well, I, I didn't ask for that. doesn't matter. doesn't matter. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, your goal is to go out and you tell people about him. Your, your, your mission is to go tell people about Jesus. That's a ministry. That's your ministry field. Just as Brian said this morning, it's outside these walls. Beyond these walls lies the mission field. We come in here, we get, we get filled up, we get energized, we get revived, if you want to call that. You know, that's why we have revival. I know a lot of lost people get saved during revival. I was, I was born again and saved during revival. But the revival's for the church, not the lost. It's to revive the church to go out get them excited, get the body of Christ excited to go out and minister into the world. And that's what we do. And how and why we can do what we do is called the unction or the anointing of God. We're an anointed. What got uh, the, the religious crowd got so upset about, the one that could speak the truth, of which was Jesus Christ, he told them the truth. He said, I'm not an anointed, I'm the anointed. I am the Christ. He said, are you the Christ? Are you the Son of God? He said, I am. I'm the, he, he, did, he said I, in, in his words, he said, I'm the Christ. I'm the one that has been promised. I'm the Messiah. I'm the one. And if we, once we get born again, we become like him. We've been given the same authority. He said, you got the authority. But the, the blessing that we get is we get to use his name, see. Well, we've already, we're already labeled as Christians or as the, the, the definition would be little Christ's. So if we're Christians and we're a little Christ, you know what we need to be acting like? <laughs> we need to be acting like Christ. We need to be doing the work of Christ. And what did he do? He went out and he had compassion upon the lost. If he saw somebody hurting and, and he could help and they walked by and he walked in and, and he saw them, he, he reached out and he helped them. He did whatever he could. He had compassion on people. And that's what we need to do. We need to have compassion on people. But let me tell you something. He had a little a righteous indignation in him too. When he saw the religious crowd trying to tell people how to live and do what they need to do and adding to the law, and he told them, he said, he said, you're, you're speaking of people. You're trying to make so much, put so much on people that it's impossible for them to do and keep what, what the law told them. It's impossible anyway, but Jesus is trying to tell them, you're adding more to it, and you can add more to it. Jesus fulfilled everything he needed to fulfill. He did everything he needed to do. He knew, and God knew from the beginning, we're put under law, but we can't keep the law. Therefore, we're going to put you under this law for a period of time until the one can come and fulfill the law. And then once the law has been fulfilled, all you have to do now and all we have to do is accept the one that fulfilled it. And that's Jesus Christ. When you accept Jesus, you fulfilled it all. You can't do it on your own. I can't do it on my own. 613 commandments. There's not one person could have done it all. But Jesus. Jesus, he, he, every, he dotted every I, crossed every T. He fulfilled everything he needed to fulfill. Therefore, in Christ, we, can, we fulfill every, every part of the law because he fulfilled it. We can do that because we are an anointed of God. What gives us that anointing? It's his spirit, the spirit of God. When, when Jesus said, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but he said, it's, that's why I've got to go. He said, I've got to return to the Father. He said, it's expedient. It's a, it's a necessary that I be in a hurry to leave because he said when I leave he said I'm going to send you another comforter he said I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit and he said he's going to abide with you and he's going to teach you all things that goes back to the teaching part we speak the word because we got the word in us now what we reason we can speak it in the way we speak it and, and to the crowds we speak it to is because the Holy Spirit's given us that unction to speak when we need to speak. You know, there's a time to speak, and you know what? There's a time to remain quiet. The worst thing we can do is force somebody to listen to us about what something we need to say because if somebody's not listening, you can tell they're not listening. You can tell they're not interested. 
And all, all we need to do then is we can we can back up just a little bit and we can talk to them. And, and, and when the door opens, watch, folks, for the door to open. When the door opens, that's when you step in. They'll open the door. If you're around somebody long enough, if you're with somebody, they're going to open the door for you to talk. So how they how they going to do that? How they going to know that? Well, when somebody gives you even the greeting, how you doing? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you how the Lord's blessed me today. You know what they did? They opened the door. Most of the time they'll walk up and say, hey, you still out the house of prayer? Absolutely. Hey, won't you come out and be with us? I'll tell you what, we've had such great service. Dr. Randy Caldwell will be there this week. I mean, it just opens a door for you to start a communication, a conversation. And a lot of times when they bring it up and it's involving ministry, church, they're wanting information. They're wanting something you have. They're wanting something I have. And therefore, sometimes, you now there's people that's, that's come up to me and they start just, I call sometimes they unload on you. They, they start telling you issues and problems. And there's sometimes under my breath I have to say, Holy Spirit, you've got to help me. I, 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 listen, they're, they're talking about some deep stuff. And Lord, you, you help me and give me words. And, and I'm telling you, I, I don't know of a time that when I've said that under my breath, the, the Lord, through his spirit, gave me something to give them. And it was something I would have never thought of. And I've walked away sometimes and going, where'd that come from? I can't believe I said that. And I stepped out. I mean, I said some stuff, and I walked away with some doubt. And I said, Lord, was I supposed to say that? Did I pray that I wasn't in myself because I told them something that maybe they, they hung on to? And uh, sure enough, you know, I get feedback, and I say, what we prayed about or what you said or what, what was talked about, it, just, it happened the way it needed to happen. I said, praise God. <laughs> praise the Lord. You know, because I had some doubt in me. God has anointed us to, so that we can may be equipped for every good work. To resist evil, to know the truth, to preach the word, to be able to pray, to have fellowship with God. There's many reasons why God does what he does for each one of us as individuals. We're special in his eyes, folks. Please don't ever think that you're not special in his eyes. He don't favor anybody over anybody else. He does not do that. What God does, he gives people certain, he gives some, some 30, some 60, some 100. You remember reading that in the scripture? 30, 60, 100? There's 30-fold Christians, 60-fold Christians, 100-fold Christians. What, what does that mean? If you're a 30-fold Christian and you're doing 30, you know what you're doing? You're doing 100%. If you're a 60-fold Christian and you're doing 60, I'm glad I wasn't called to be a Billy Graham. I'm glad I wasn't called to be a Randy Caldwell. I'm glad I wasn't called to be a Perry Stone or Ron Carpenter or Jensen Franklin uh, or John Hagee. I mean, they've, they've got more on them because God has equipped them to do what they're doing. It doesn't make them any better, any special. Only thing, it may, if they're accomplishing, they're, if they're 100-fold and they're doing 100-fold, they're doing 100%. If I'm 30-fold and I'm doing 30 and I'm doing 100%, I'm doing the same thing as, as, as all those ones I just named off. Exactly. Exactly. You can't. Exactly, you know exactly where I'm going with this because uh, it's. Like yeah. You know, and then, of course, that one didn't use his at all, so he burned right. his and said he knew he was a harsh man and whatever. So, you know. Exactly. But, and, we but, have but to use what we got. Use what you got. And in, in, in the scripture, it plainly says it, he gave to them according to their ability. See? Our ability. If, if you take a 30-fold and he gives a 100-fold to a 30-fold, he set him up for failure. He set me up for failure because I'm not, I'm not there. And, and honestly, I don't know that I want to be there. I, it's, it's more responsibility. For much is given, much is required, see? So I'm just saying, all I've got to be, be concerned with is to take care of what God has given me. Be a good steward, be a good manager, and do what I'm called to do. As long as I'm doing my my 100% best, guess what I get? I get the reward of 100% fold. See, I get the, I get to whoever's doing the hundred, I get the same if I'm a thirty. That's the way it works. That's the way he does. Talking about the anointing, if you, we read in Scripture, it's in Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14. Because of time, I can't go into it. We've talked about this here before. 
We talk about the, the anointed cherub, which was Lucifer. He's referred to as the anointed cherub. He had an anointing on him. The way he was built, he was built with types and with pipes and tabrets in him. To pipes and tabrets or some type. It's, it, we've got instruments that are pipes and tabrets. You can take the scriptures and you can show that there was some type of musical ability. There was a sound that coming from him. Praise and worship. There was a sound at one time that Lucifer had through his, through what he, the way he was created, the way he was built. That's why that he's got such an influence over music today. Y'all remember several messages that that we talked about here before. There's a difference between the anointing and the gift. There's gifts and there's anointings. Okay. What happens a lot of times, we as a church get them too mixed up. We see somebody with a gift, especially in, their, in the confines of a church setting, and think sometimes maybe they've got an anointing on them. It takes the Holy Spirit to let you know this is not anointing, this is a gift. See, we've got to be very careful about saying, boy, that person's anointed. That person might be very gifted, but they may not be operating under the anointing. See, and Perry Stone brought this out in one of his teachings, and this is a clear way, I think, in, in, that you can tell if somebody's operating under a gift or under anointing. If somebody's operating under a gift, they're pointing everything towards the person. If somebody has got the anointing, they're pointing towards Jesus. Whether it's speaking, whether it's singing, whether it is, is, is your actions, anything that you're doing, if you're operating under anointing, you're pointing people towards Jesus. If you're operating under a gift, all they're seeing is you. It's, it's, it, and, and it, after a while, what will happen, it will come about you. There, people do have gifts, and I'm so thankful for the gifts. The, uh, but you see, if you're very gifted, and, and I, I use this because several ministers have over the years, is Elvis Presley, for an example. Assemblies of God, that's where he, where he was brought up in. And... Uh, he, he, I guess he, he learned to play the guitar there, wanted to be a part of the church, wanted to sing, and th they taught him, they said, well, you know that Elvis Presley was told he can't sing? He was told he couldn't sing, and they didn't like the way he did things in the church. And, they, and, they, and, and basically he, he wouldn't, I won't say he's pushed or run out, but he, 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 he didn't attend the church. He didn't, he didn't do what he needed to do. Can you imagine Elvis Presley with the gift he had under the anointing? How, how charismatic he would be and how many people he could have drew to the Lord. But you think about a lot of these people out here, whether they're uh, singers, musicians, or Hollywood, if they were taking their gift and using what God blessed them with under the anointing, you see how many people could be reached. Somebody asked Elvis one time, he said, Elvis said, uh, you think you should, you should be in church? And he said, absolutely. I know where I need to be. He said, but if I walk away from what I'm doing and go into the church, he said there's a lot of people that depends on me out here in the world right now. He said I've got people that depends on me and he said I'd let them down if I go back into the church. Now I, I, now I believe this, I've heard reports of it I believe it, 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 towards the end Elvis did get saved but you think what he could have done while he was singing under the anointing under the, with his gift he, me, he mesmerized people I watched videos where you see people just shaking as he would be singing. You think what would happen if he was under the anointing? People would he would have pointed everybody to Jesus Christ, and people could have could, people everywhere. I truly believe could have been brought in. Hollywood, Hollywood has gifts, but they're not using their gifts uh, for the Lord. Uh, music, as I talked about, there's 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 music that is a gift of music. People are singing and they've got gifts, but if they sing under the anointing, you know what they're doing? They're singing for Jesus. And when we, and that's what we do, don't we, Francie? We sing for the Lord. When we step up here, everybody up here, if you're if you're not up here singing for the Lord, we're singing for the wrong reasons. You sing to Him. We're singing for Him. We're singing to Him. Everybody around just gets the blessing that results from that. We get to see the gift plus the anointing. See, and that's how we get blessed is because of that. We're using our gift under the anointing for the Lord. And that's what it's all about, folks. H have you ever considered yourself to be anointed? Have you thought about it? Is it does it mean anything to you to be anointed? You, what it means, folks, is your words mean something. 
as a Christian, as a born-again, blood-bought servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, your words and my words mean something. And we're anointed to go do that. Maybe you thought only certain people in the, uh, that ministers were only anointed. Maybe the prophets in the Old Testament and the apostles in the New Testament are the, the, the only ones that were anointed. Uh, if you're a Christian, you're anointed. You have an anointing. Let me read to you what Webster's Dictionary means. It, it, it means something different than what I thought it, it even meant. To be anointed or to anoint means to rub oil on or rub ointment on or to put oil on in the ceremony of a consecration. It basically means to rub in. To anoint means to rub in. I know that some of you, I have, we've, we've come up there, we've been anointed, we've prayed over. We've had oil put, placed upon us, placed upon the hands of the ministers, of the elders, the ones praying. We lay the, our hands upon, we pray the prayer of faith, and what we've, we've done, we've anointed somebody for prayer. There's, there's different reasons. You, there's anointing that goes on in an ordination ceremony. When somebody's being ordained to, to be a minister or ordained to be a deacon, ordained in, in the church, you do it through the laying on of hands and the anointing using the oil. We all know, even in the prayer cloths, you know, we, we, we believe in taking prayer cloths with us. My prayer over every cloth is, Father, we know that this cloth means nothing. It's just a cloth. But it's by your spirit all things are accomplished. We're praying over this. We're anointing it with oil. And we're sending it forth as your word would go, that whoever receives this would receive whatever it is they have need of. See, that's the prayer. We know it's, I, I want to always say it's never, it's never in anything that's like a cloth or that's materialistic. It's always within, by his spirit. It's not by might nor by power. It says, by my spirit, saith the Lord. His spirit is what makes everything possible. It makes everything happen. Prophets were anointed. Think about this in the Old Testament, in, in 1 Kings 19, 16. The son, J, the, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. They anointed kings. Elisha, the son of Saphat, shalt thou anoint to be a prophet in thy room. Priests were anointed in Exodus chapter 40, verse 13. And thou shalt put upon Aaron the holy garments and anoint him and sanctify him that he may minister. And when we anoint, you know, we anoint for healing. We put hands on, we pray the prayer of faith. And, and we put our hands on people and we pray for them and believe that they're going to be touched, they're going to be healed. When you anoint somebody for the work of the ministry, what you're doing is setting them apart for a holy, a, a, a uh, special purpose. And that's what we do. We, we, we pray over somebody. That's why it's important as evangelists, you know. And, and uh, Glenn, you and, and, and Kenny, and, you know, we pray over you. We say, Lord, you bless them as they go out. We, 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 you've got a spiritual covering. Everybody's got to have a covering. I don't care... Uh, Perry Stone attends the North Cleveland Church of God when, when he's not out ministering. Uh, Randy Caldwell attends a church there in Houston, Texas. Just because they evangelize and they go out and they speak don't mean they don't have a spiritual covering. They do. Every Christian has to have a spiritual covering. If you do, you know what you're, if you, if you don't, you know what you're like? You're, you're, you're like that little lost animal out there that is trying to, to see where they go to or where they belong. And you know what, our, our adversary, the devil, uh, he's, he's going around seeking whom he may devour. And that's exactly what he's looking for. He's looking for the ones out there wandering around looking for something, uh, looking for a place to go or a place to be. That's why if you're under your spiritual covering, you know what you've got? You've got the prayer of the saints behind you. You've got a covering over you. You've got a hedge about you. What happens when that does? Because you're connected. You're connected to a body. A predator never goes into the middle of the pack to attack one. Watch it. You, you can Google it or YouTube it anytime, anytime you want. You know what the predator does? He's sitting back and waiting. He's looking for the one that's lagging behind, the one that's off to the side. He's not going to the middle of the pack. And, you, and our adversary knows better than to come in and try to do something in the middle while he's looking for the ones that's lagging behind, the ones that... Uh, are down and, and not, not been encouraged and the ones that's trying to do it on their own instead of having the, having a connection to the body it's so important folks even even scripture backs it up when the, the, the devil went to God when Satan went to God and God said have you considered my servant Job 
He talked about it. God knew his heart and God knew about him. Satan thought he knew he, what he could do. Well, Satan goes, but he says, oh, wait a minute, you got a hedge about him. I can't get to him. Isn't that awesome to know that you and I have a hedge about us? And our enemy, our adversary, cannot get to us unless the hedge is down. Now, God can drop the hedge or we ourselves can have the hedge dropped. Our actions, the things we do, the things we don't do, our hedge can come down. When the hedge comes down, the enemy, there he is in the woods. He's laying back. He's, he's kind of, he, you know, as a, as a roaring lion seeking who may, watch that lion. He's just sitting back. He's waiting. And once he sees the hedge down, he sees the little straggler out, that's when he knows he can pounce. In 1 Samuel 16, it says, and called, and called Jesse to, to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him who I name unto thee. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. David was anointed as king. When he was anointed to be the leader, when he was anointed of God, he was anointed with oil, and he had that anointing upon him. If you remember King Saul, it said when King Saul didn't do what he was supposed to do, when he didn't go, go into the Amalekites, and I believe it was Amalek, he, he left alive, and he brought him back, and, and he, he was given sp specific instructions of God. He said, when you go into it, he said, I want you to wipe them out. Man, woman, child, beast, everything. I don't want nothing left of them. And he brings the king back, and he, and he saves some of the cattle back. And, and he used the, the excuse of, well, I'm, I'm going to make a sacrifice. And that's when those, those words of Samuel says, it's better to, to, uh, it's better to be obedient than to sacrifice. And Samuel had to take matters into his own hand, and he, and he says he cut Amalek up with a sword. See, if you, maybe you you or me are not in a position of, of, of a leadership, but let me tell you something. You're in a position of leadership as the high priest of your home. Men, you're, the, you're in a position of leadership as a high priest of your home. And please understand, men and women, mankind, please understand this. What you do don't just affect you. It can go down generations. What you do or what you don't do can not only affect you, but it can affect your generations. It says even to the third and the fourth generation. That's why we're there, we, we've talked about up here about, about the generational curses or, or the, gener the, the things that go from generation to generation. It's been spoken about uh, because it's not been dealt with. The iniquities fall through the generations if we're not careful. That's why it's important what we do or what we don't do. We anoint the sick and we pray for them. In Mark 6, 6, 13, And they cast out many devils and anointed them with oil, uh, anointed with oil many that were sick, and they were healed. Uh, I, know th I know objects, Brother Carl, that has been anointed, don't you? From uh, pillows and toothbrushes and, and bed sheets. And so why would you anoint pillows and toothbrushes? Well, listen, if you're praying for somebody, some of your family members to be saved, Sister Linda knows, you know what? You know, I'm going to go all out for God on this. So I'm going to anoint everything in my house. Can you, can you do that? Absolutely, you can do that. Matter of fact, you should anoint your house if you've never anointed your house. You should take, you take the oil. Well, I don't have that special oil you get. I, do I need to get it from Jerusalem? Do I need to get it from Israel? No. All you have to do, see what you what we've got to understand is I can anoint that bottle of water what do you mean you can the anointing doesn't transfer until I pray it on there and oil is a representation in the word of God that's why we use oil you can go get you a bottle of oil and you can pray over it now once you pray over it it becomes consecrated what's consecrated means it's been set apart for a specific purpose you want a family member to be saved and you want to pray over your oil and you're going to make something cooking oil and you're going to cook in it, cook in it. Cook in it. Let them eat that anointed oil or whatever it is that's been cooked in that oil, anointed oil. You, you can pray over and you should anoint your house. You should anoint your rooms. You should put oil on your hands and pray and say, Lord, bless this house. This is your house. 
everything within these walls, when people come in, they need to understand this is anointed house and they need to feel your presence. There's things we do. We take, a th we take our position that God put us in. In Leviticus 8 and, 8 and 10, here's an example. Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was therein and sanctified them. For what purpose were they anointed? Prophets were anointed to be able to proclaim God's word. Priests were anointed to carry out the duties of worship and sacrifice. Kings were anointed so they could rule. People were anointed for the, so they could be healed. And objects were anointed so they could be set apart for a holy use. As you can see, anointing is very biblical concept and it, it, it was a common occurrence throughout the Bible if you remember the, the, the woman that had the alabaster box what did she do she said this is my time right now I like the way one preacher put it he said they, the, Jesus walked into a men's club basically in there they were just in there and then all this, once this, this woman comes in she got an alabaster box that's very precious very costly and she breaks the box and he said it like this. He said, once you, once you, if you pour something, you can control how it flows. When you break it, it just flows. And she broke the box. And she anointed Jesus. And they got mad. They got mad. They said, you took this precious stuff and you could have done something else with it. And Jesus said, leave her alone. So let me tell you something, for what she did this day, it'll be a memorial for her. And she'll be talked about for ages. And guess what? We're still talking about her. What she did. She anointed Jesus. She said, all she's done is preparing me for my burial. I've told you, you've been walking with me, Jesus said. You've been walking and talking with me. I've told you what's got to happen. This is getting ready to happen. But you know what? She, she, she needed something. And the other Gospels record how she wept, how she fell at his feet, and she washed his feet. See, folks, when we're anointed of God, we understand the presence of God. We've got to understand when the presence of God, what it is and when it's not. That goes back to what we read earlier. The only way we're going to know the truth these days Remember we talked about artificial intelligence? AI, they call it. When you can say, hey Siri or hey Alexa, do this, and things happen. I'm telling you. It's going, you, you can see where things are going. There's commercial on now. Hey Alexa, turn the oven on. Preheat it to 350. The cameras go over there and you see the oven kick on and see the temperature go to 350. If you're going to know the truth and be set free by the truth, you're going to have to know who the truth is. The truth is Jesus. That's right. And the Holy Ghost that dwells within us will always point us to Jesus. That's what Jesus told them. He said, He will not, when the Holy Spirit comes, He won't speak of Himself, but He'll speak of me. But the one speak, that lives within us, that dwells within us, the Holy Spirit of God, He will not only abide in us, but He will reveal all truth to us. And we will know whether it is or whether it didn't. There's a lot of things that's going on out there, folks. And you better know the truth. Because that's the only way you're going to be free is to know the truth. And to know Jesus. Know what is and what isn't. Don't grab a hold of everything that comes along. Because it's so enticing and it sounds so good. We're going to make things so easy and so convenient for you and I that we just want to grab onto it. Now, I'm going, to, I'm, going to go, I'm going to step over to the opposite way. Technology is great. Technology is good if it's used for the right reason. TVs are good if they're used for the right reason. Radios are good if they're used for the right reason. What you take good... See, the, 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 those... Uh, I remember years... I, I'm, I went to school. Leslie, is Leslie up here? Cheryl, you remember? We went to school with some people that, wouldn't, that uh, the parents wouldn't allow TVs in their house. Call, call them boxes from hell. The, yeah, yeah. The de the devil's tail or something called that. The, the, the old antenna behind the house was called the devil's tail. Yeah. But I mean, that's what people believe. Th that object was neither good or bad. It's how it was used. It's, a, it's an object. It's, a, it's how you use that object. 
See, and th things are like that. But technology is getting to the point where you're going to have to really know if it is or didn't. And the only way we're going to know if it is or didn't, you got to know the genuine before you can detect the counterfeit. You remember the example of the hundred dollar bills? You know, we when when, when I was a detective, we, we, you know, for some that that haven't heard this, when I was a detective, I took a training class from the U.S. Secret Service, and in that in that class, we had to determine bills that were genuine, bills that were counterfeit. And you had to you had to tell the difference, or, or you couldn't pass the class. Well, guess what? We got a lot of anxiety over that because we're saying we don't know how we're going. Because I'm telling you, there's some good made bills out there that look totally real. But once you handled, once you looked at, and once you got to see the genuine, you could spot the counterfeit just like that. Amazing how quick you could spot a counterfeit. Now, there were some very good. And there, was, there was a few of us that, that questioned one bill that the instructor had to go back and look up the serial number on it to make sure if, if whether it was a good. That's how good it was. And we, we were right. It, it, it was the real one, but it looked it didn't look exactly right. So, there. What I'm saying is, folks, is if we if we want to know the truth, we have to know the truth. We have to know the truth. We have to make sure that we're we're tuned in and we're locked into the word. We have to know when it is and when it is, especially this time, because. Remember what Jesus told his disciples when he was looking for the time. He said, when will the end come? When will you return and when will the end come? Well, first of all, Jesus said, it's not for you to know the time. He said, but you can know the seasons. You know where we can know where we're at. But the first thing he told them with, with the answer was, he said, let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. He said, there's going to many be coming. And they're going to say there's Christ. And lo, there Christ is over there. And he, he said, don't go that way. He said, he said, you know me, you know the Spirit of God. When you know me and the Spirit, you know what is genuine and what's not. Is there Antichrist out there? Absolutely. Not the one, the Antichrist that Revelation is talking about or Thessalonians is talking about. Not, not there. I'm talking about the Spirit of Antichrist as First John talks about is already here. And the Spirit of Antichrist is anything Antichrist. We got it in our government, a group of them that is antichrist right now, speaking lies, and trying to turn things around. As you can see, anointing is very biblical. Anointing occurs for this purpose: for proclaiming worship, for worship, for sacrifice, for ruling, for healing, to make something ready for holy use. In fact, that's why Jesus was anointed so he could carry out his ministry. Was Jesus anointed? Oh, absolutely, he was anointed. Remember when he stepped into the water of the Jordan? And when he came up, it says the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove. You know, that's when, at that point, after that, he was led out into the wilderness by the Spirit where he was tempted of the devil. See, the devil knew something then, didn't he? As one person said, and this is what, and this is so true. If you think about it, the enemy will not attack you for what you're doing. He'll attack you for who you are. See, he was trying to see if Jesus was who he said he is. Did he say that? Read the scripture. If you be the Son of God, command these stones. If you be. Folks, he's questioning us every single day. If you be of Christ, if you be an anointed, if you're anointed, why? He's always tempting you and me to do something totally opposite of what the Scripture says. Because he's saying, if you are, if you are, if you are. L listen to the words of Jesus in Luke 4, 18 and 19. I'm just about done. What Jesus did, he quoted Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. And he said this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of the sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So now we know that the anointing is biblical, that it was done for a variety of reasons, that even Jesus was anointed, 
you may ask why is this important is it important it, it is important because it helps to understand better our need to operate in our anointing and that's what we're doing folks when we are the anointing we need to be able to operate in our anointing and know how to operate in our anointing and that's when like I said earlier there's times when you need to speak and there's just times you just need to just be quiet just let the Lord operate let him the worst thing again is, is we try to kick a door open let the door open let somebody open that door as John, 1 John 2 and 27 says that you've received an anointing and, you, and we have that anointing and that anointing we know comes from the Lord. He's not going to let something sneak up on us. He, as Amos 3 and 7 says, surely the Lord God will do nothing but he revealeth the, his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And I've got plenty of notes left but I've run out of time. How, how is this anointing received? This is for the ones that are lost. This is for the ones that don't know Christ or don't know how to obtain this anointing. This, it starts at the cross, then the empty tomb, and then the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is received by faith in the sacrifice that Jesus made upon the cross. The same faith it takes for you to be saved is the same faith it takes to believe that the Holy Spirit indwells you and, you, you, and that you receive and be empowered it says, I believe as John said, that you know I can indeed baptize you with water, but said there's one coming that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's where we get the boldness, folks, is, is where we receive the power of the Spirit of God. When the Holy Spirit comes not only upon us, when he comes within us and he starts dwelling within us, we got the boldness to go do and speak when we need to speak. We got the, we. If somebody needs prayer, I believe Brother Kenny was talking about like on Wednesday night. Says somebody needs prayer in Walmart or they need prayer in the post office. Will you pray for me? Absolutely. Come over here, and you go walk over and you lay hands on them, and you start praying for them. Gives you that boldness. It it, it makes you uh, speak up when you need to speak up. It needs you to 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 step in when you need to step in, and to know who you are in Christ and know who I am in Christ. The Holy Spirit is received by faith. Jesus said he would send the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit would indwell his people. It is only because the cross that we have forgiveness of sin and the, and the privilege of the indwelling spirit, not only for you, for me, but for you and I both, that we can operate together as one. Jesus, in his conclusion upon this earth, he said, I and my Father are one. He said, as though I and my Father are one, you are one in me and the Father. We're all one together. One body, one, one faith, one baptism, one spirit. We're all one, folks, in Jesus Christ. And we need to understand that. We need to make sure we're operating that way. We are anointed vessel of God. We should be cleansed by God and be filled with his spirit. And let me tell you something. The infilling, sometimes Pentecostal and, and full gospel miss this. They think the the infilling the infilling of the Holy Spirit is a one time. It's not a one time. It's it's a continuous feeling. It's a continuous outpouring of the Spirit. We need to be filled every single day. Every single day we need to be filled by the Spirit. He is not only upon us, he is he is within us. As the Holy Spirit came upon his disciples on the day of Pentecost in the upper room and anointed them for service, we too have been anointed by God with the Holy Spirit for Christian service to go out and do the work of the evangelist. Do the work that he's called us to do. And we can only do that when we are anointed by the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Hope, hope this blessed you this morning. It blessed me when I was studying it, when I was reading it, and it's blessed me already again this morning. You know, it's, it's kind of like that two-edged sword. It, it kept coming and going. Coming to me and then going out. It, it just It's good. It's just good word. The word is always good. The word will minister to hearts, and we just have to receive it. Amen? All right. Choir singers, praisers, come on. Let's sing praises unto the Lord.
so I kindly picked them out. Jesus said it, it is expedient for me to go away, but I'll send you another
thought that Holy Ghost comforter living inside. I thought that Word of God giving me power divine. I thought that joy and peace, holy love filling my life. I thought that overcoming power through the name of Jesus Christ. Whenever I'm in need, I know that I have a victory. Crushed his head and set me free. My chains are broken now. I have new life. I'm free to sing and shout and testify. Now when I living inside I thought that word of God giving me power divine I thought the joy and peace holy love filling my life I thought that overcoming power in the name of Jesus Christ whenever I'm in need I know that I have the victory come on help us I got that hope Comforter living inside. I bought the word of God, giving me power divine. I bought that joy and peace, holy love filling my life. I bought the overcoming power through the name of Jesus Christ. Whenever I'm in need, I know that I have a victory.
When the president comes in the house, we give him praise, amen. Some of them do. There ain't too many of them stand, but I think we need to just stand and give Jesus Christ the, the, the praise, amen, he deserves, and deserves, amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence this morning, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your holy name. Yes, Lord Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Got that hand, Mike. Uh, Brother John, you care to do some help me do some reading here directly? You can do it right there, whatever. But whenever, whenever I, I get down to that, I get in the Old Testament there. I can't uh, read a lot of them names. I can have them read to me a hundred times, and when and when it comes to me, I can't read it. So, but anyway, let me get where I'm at. Uh, let me get my iPad going here and see tractor supply. No, any. Let me get another page here. I get on. I'm on. You know, it says the confessor falls to one another if you ain't careful. I mean, I'm not a too much a computer guy, but I got this uh, uh, iPad thing and get on there. And before you know it, you'll get on the on that Craigslist, anybody? I'm the only one gets on the Craigslist. Fold your hands up there, brother. I wouldn't raise them either. Uh, on that Craigslist, you ain't careful. You'll spend three or four hours on there before you know it, hunting for something. And say, wonder where the time is. It's done time to go to bed. <laughs> and you never even read before you went to bed. All you've got time is is yawn out a couple of little prayers <laughs> and say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Am I the only one in that? Amen. 
Praise the Lord. But uh, let's go to Luke chapter 6. Let me get that up. Got my, I'm in another place here. All right, wait a minute. Luke chapter 6. And let me see. Hang on, man. I'm a little bit slow this morning. Wasn't prepared this morning. Go to chapter 27. Luke chapter, or verse 27. Luke chapter 6, verse 27. I title this message. I like to title messages if you can. Sometimes I get too, get by. But I remember when I worked in the workplace, you go to work, and I asked some of the brothers to work, said, why'd the preacher preach on? Well, I don't know. Well, tell, give me some kind of hint. Well, I don't know. So, but anyway, uh, and then they'd ask me, they said, why'd you preach on your church? I said, well, I don't know. And sometimes they'd ask me, what'd you preach on? I said, I don't know. <laughs> Amen. But uh, I call the title this message, uh, Love Thy Enemy, okay? We start at verse number 27 in Luke, verse 27. Y'all pray for me. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to move here in a mighty way this morning, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bring us close together, unite, unite us, Lord God, and we just thank you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I had another message, but what Brian said this morning, it kind of went along with what he said, you know, if we go out to the, the thing, to the downtown we're taking it out and uh, and i like the deal of selling not selling hot dogs give it to them amen uh so it, it'll it'll fit right in with the message verse 20 uh, verse 27 but i say unto you which hear, love your enemies do good to them that hate you bless them that curse you and pray for them that spitefully use you that's hard to do and sometimes but the word of god tells us to do it amen what he tells to be not only what hears of the word, but what doers of the word. Bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitely use you. Uh, we prayed that many times. Lord God, we ask you, Lord, just to kill them. I mean, they're, they're coming again, me. We're tired of putting up with it. Lord God, you kill them. Amen. We ain't careful. That's what we're doing. Bless them that curse you and pray for them that decidedly use you. And unto him that smites thee on one cheek, offer also the other. And to him that taketh away the cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. And give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that uh, taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as, I, and as you would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise for if you love them which love you what thanks have you for sinners also love those that love them and if you and if you do good to them which do good to you what thanks have ye for sinners also do even the same and if you lend to them whom you hope to receive what thanks have ye for sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies and do good and lend hopefully for nothing again. Your reward shall be great and you shall be the children of the highest for it is kind and to the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful to you. Alrighty, I, I just uh, trying to go on the computer here. I should have read on down a little bit further. Let's see. Yeah, let me read. Let me read verse. Uh, my notes. Let's see. And judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall be condemned. Not forgive, and it shall be be forgiven. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressure down and shaken together and running over, shall all men give into your bosom for which the same measure you met that shall be measured to you again. Amen. Amen. How we, how we want to be treated is the way we are to be treat others. Amen. Amen. And I thought about I was supposed to say this uh, uh, whenever I was up here, whenever it was last time uh, on a Sunday or Wednesday. 
uh, on the funny side, you know, we know our sister Bev, she was praying for uh, Steve to get overtime. Praying to get overtime. And he was up here singing. I think it was in the choir on Sunday morning. He was up here sang singing. And his little beeper thing went off. And we know his little beeper thing went off. Uh, he had to go to work. Well, he, he works for the... Uh, the city, or whatever you want to call it, and anyway, uh, you know, some of his jobs is not too good of jobs, and uh, but anyway, he'd been, she'd been praying, and we, and some, and we agreed, you know, to pray sometimes, you know, agreed to pray for overtime, you know, brother Steve get overtime, so we're, uh, uh, if we pray for something, we're, uh, we're into it in agreement that you know Steve gets overtime, and. Uh, and we're the reason that it gets overtime because we pray and the things we do. Okay, uh, some of the jobs that uh, Brother Steve works on ain't too good. I wouldn't want nobody to be praying overtime for me. <laughs> None. <laughs> None. Hope you get unemployed on some of the jobs he does. Well, he got called out and... and uh, we was down underneath the pavilion, uh, just sitting around and, and uh, drinking soda pops. And here comes a little light of a flag, little truck coming in at break time, about 10 o'clock at night. And uh, I said, Brother Steve, what are, we, what are we doing? What are we working on? He said, a smile on his face, mud plumb up to his, up here. I said, what are you working on? I said, he told me, a grinder pump. I said, that didn't have anything to do with them nuts and bolts. I flushed down the thing, did it? No. No, but he still had a smile on his face. I had to turn that. He calls it, uh, y'all might be saying, I'm thinking, saying a bad word, but it's in the Bible, dung. But I looked up in the dung in the Bible just a minute ago sitting here, and I said, well, I might be messed up. Dung, one of the things, was a fruit. But uh, what I read in the Bible, dung, it's the same thing as he said. And y'all may think it's a bad word, but it's not poop. <laughs> and I don't want to play in that, hey man, hey amen. But he had a smile on his face. He said, I'm on break right now. And you know, we pray for the guy that he has to go out and do this kind of stuff. <laughs> he helped us out on both ends. He helped us out on that. <laughs> he helped us out on the food ministry, bringing food. I hope he works his hands. Uh, but anyway. Uh, he brings food, amen. But uh, we need to, we need to love one another because we don't know. I like to say, Brother Winston said he seen one time on a little plaque in Tennessee, "Don't judge the brethren until you walk in his moccasins," amen. So a lot of times we we uh, we say things, you know, and think, well, somebody's got the they got the good life, but to, uh, you know, we don't know what they're going through, amen, amen. So what, uh, uh, you know, whatever we go through, sometimes, you know, we still have a smiling face. Amen? Amen? And, uh, but I was going to ask to, uh, to go along with uh, uh, feeding our enemies. And, you know, he brings, Steve brings food. He go gets the food, brings the church. He don't know who's to go to. It might have been his worst enemy to cause that, sewer, that grinder pump to mess up. <laughs> Amen. They may throw some things in there that uh, I can't mention in there that may rip that thing up. Uh, I said, Brother Steve, explain that to me. There's a little grinding wheel in there grinds up. I said, I know about grinders. We, I work in a factory. We had grinders. And people throw, <laughs> you can't throw concrete blocks and grinders. <laughs> It'll tear them up. Amen. But anyway, uh, let me, enough of that. Let's go to Second Kings uh, chapter, uh, chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. Let me get that up, and I'll have him read down probably. Uh, uh, let me get it up here. A little bit slow this morning. Like a lot of times we don't see, like I said. Uh, let's see. I'll, let me have Johnny. Uh, hold on. Start reading at verse 9, chapter 6. First, start reading at verse 9 and go. Well, we're going down. We'll see how it goes here. Start reading it. Eh, I'm getting messed up again. Yeah, 2 Kings. 
chapter 6, verse 9. All ready? Sweet, Brother Johnny. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou not pass such a place. For thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore, sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is, is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel that the word that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Read on down. Here you go. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may, I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Go on down. Dothan. I'll tell you when to stop. Therefore Wait. sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the, of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and a host compassed the city both which horses and, with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for thee that be with us are more than they that be with us. All right, hold on just a second. We're going to have to read on down just a minute. A lot of times we can't see, amen, we can't see the other side of the picture. You know, we, uh, and not to lift up Steve, but we got several utility plant board men working here. We don't see... We just see the little trucks going up and down the road. We don't see, you know, I don't really know exactly what all they do. I don't know if they're, I know they're responsible. <laughs> if uh, if we don't get water, uh, we'll be giving Larry a call and say, hey, well, Larry, we've got no water down here. We'll be calling. He'll be whoever it may be. They'll be calling out one of these other fellows. We don't see, you know, what's going on. Same with the other on the other end of the system, what goes off. I don't know if they do the electric or not, but anyway, we'd be calling. We'd be calling some of them. So we don't see what's on the other side, you know, what's what's going on. Amen. We think, well, they just got it made, but they go through a lot of stuff. And, and, uh, and uh, but uh, my brother there, you know, like I said a minute ago, you know, he come out with a smile. Amen. Amen. And, and I wouldn't be, you know, but in his passage here the scriptures you know their enemy you know had come again them you know uh, and come again them and uh, and sometimes we, like I said we, we can't see we can't see what's going on we can't see all we can see is what we see but old time we pray I know on the way up here you know me and my wife has had a discussion she said well I think you need to, to, to go to the Lord to pray about it and see what kind of answer he gives you and I said well I've been, been praying about it but some, how many of us sometimes we pray about a season and you think you've got a season from the Lord and then, you know, you say, well, I, I just don't know. You say, well, I need to pray about it a little bit more. And then maybe you feel like you've got an answer, a, a different answer maybe after you pray about it more. And then you're in, in a season you don't know what to do. I read in Scripture and I think sometimes uh, uh, I get in that kind of situation myself. Sometimes uh, you want something in your heart so bad you want to move on into it before you really hear from the Lord. But sometimes the situation, you know, when you do that, you mess up. But sometimes when you hear it like one way, you felt, Lord, Lord, you're leading me over here this way, and Lord, you're leading me up, and I feel like I'm led over this way, and you pray about the situation, and then he said, and I, and, but on the way up here, it's like a, I was kind of praying about the situation, and it kind of made stand still. You know, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. You know, sometimes on some situations we just have to stand still. But here they was in a battle. You know, he was in a battle. He couldn't see what was going on. Amen. And and we need to, you know, we need to to, to pray. Lord, you show me. You show me behind the scenes. You show me this. You show me everything, so I can have compassion over the ones that I feel is like again me or whatever. You know, so I can have passion. A lot of times we. We, uh, we get in there in our minds. Well, they're, they're, these people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> but like I said, we don't know. So that's why we need, to, we need to pray about everything. Amen? We need to pray about everything and seek the Lord. And read on, Johnny. 
And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. See, that's basically what I said there a minute ago. We said kill them, but same thing. That's what he meant. We, we want them, we want them smit. We want them uh, smit. Smit, not smitten, smit. My wife gets that mixed up. She gets, I said, I try to use the word on smit, and she thinks, you know, she wants to smack. <laughs> Amen. Go on, read on, Brother Johnny. And Elisha said to them, this is not the way. Neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring, to, bring you to the man who you, whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria, and it came to pass, when they come to, into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw. And How behold. many of us has prayed, Lord? <laughs> Lord, Johnny's, he's got an ought to give me. He don't like it, and I don't like him. How many times am I going to pray, Johnny, you open the eyes of my servant so he can see. Amen. I'm just using that for example. Love you, brother. Go ahead. So they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall, shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldst thou smite those whom thou hast, hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared great provisions for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to, the, to their master. So the bands of Syrian came no more into the land of Israel. Read on down. And it came to pass after, that, after this that Benadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an, an ass's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver. All right, hold up. Now, what I said earlier, when I clicked on that, if anybody's got an iPad, kick, click on that uh, uh, dung right there and see what kind of definition you get. See, well, I understand it was, <laughs> they was talking about fruit there, but Lord, <laughs> anyway, I, that was one of the definitions. Read on, sorry, brother. And the fourth part of the cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, they cried, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, whence shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press? Okay, uh, all right, I think I let you go on further and I just want to read, but that's okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see here. I've lost what I but had, but had any today there. Have we read past? Uh, I hadn't read this right before I got up here, but where he talked about, you know, smiting them, you know, he said, no, feed them. Amen. He wanted to feed them. Amen. And I thought that would go along with what Brian, like I said a minute ago, Brian said, you know, and doing the sister jury. You know, we go out, you know, to bring them in. Amen. And uh, if, you know, if you got a, what would be the, what would be the best thing for, if we had thieves in the community, what would be the best thing that could happen to the thieves, the thieves in the community? If they got saved, wouldn't it? Amen. How many of us remember the time, remember the time a few years back when you could go out and you didn't have to worry about locking the house when you left? Amen. When I was a little kid, we probably didn't even have a lock on the door. As far as I know, we didn't have, and most of the time you had them screen doors that just, you know, them old wooden screen doors that just flop open. You didn't have to have a lock. You just left the screen doors open. We didn't have air conditioner. Amen. So we, we didn't have to, you know, wouldn't it be back? Uh, I'm not praying that I'd like to go back and have to uh, bust wood and, 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 and bust up the coal and, and, and have the fire. 
You know, I can remember when I was a kid, you know, we, we'd go visit, amen, if, if we went to Brother Johnny's house to visit, and when we come back in, uh, we would have to take our blankets, me and my sister, we'd get the blankets off the bed, and we'd take them and wrap them around after Dad got the fire kindled back up. He'd just be about gone out. Uh, uh, Wilson comes to your house. He won't stay over 15 minutes because he's always afraid the fire go out. That's about as long as he'll stay when he comes to visit, 15 minutes. But anyway, he don't want the fire to go out. But when we was a kid, if we went somewhere there, uh, Dad, he'd like to stay a long time. He'd stay two or three hours, so we better get home before the fire gets out. And most time it was out. But he'd get a kennel back up, and we would take our blankets and wrap them around that stove. We'd get them to work. It looked like smoke was coming off of them. And we, anybody else been in that situation, you'd run as hard as you could run and jump into bed and wrap up and try not to move. Try not to move. Hold that heat in as long as you could. Amen. So, uh, I don't know why I got off on that, but we have, <laughs> we have enemies out there that's going to try to, about the door, I guess, locking the doors, but uh, going to try to take your stuff. But if we feed them in enemies and show them love, amen, and then they may no longer be your enemy, amen. How many of us, how many of us goes to Walmart parking lot and pulls in over there with your cell phone, uh, maybe iPad, uh, you uh, leave your pocketbook, uh, I'm preaching on Linda, leave all that stuff, just land in the car and go in the store, amen. It's not too wise to do that these days, amen, amen. Uh, a friend of mine we worked with, they went up somewhere or another, Cincinnati, uh, went up there and, and just, uh, uh, wife left the, the pocketbook in the car, tried to hide it, you know, put a, a, a jacket over it, come out, the windows bust, busted out of the, uh, the vehicle, and, uh, and, you know, just in a matter of a few minutes, uh, they, done, they done took all the stuff. But if we take our enemies, that we think there's our enemies, and feed them and show them love, amen, then we won't have to worry about that, amen. It would be nice, amen. Uh, it would be nice to get back to the days that, Lord, you know, uh, uh, we know you got it, amen, and we don't have to worry about nothing. But I'm kind of way like that when a storm, when a storm comes, <laughs> my wife will say, ain't you going to set up? I can, you know, I said, well, you going to set up and watch it. Ain't you said, both of us sitting up all night. <laughs> One of us has got to get some sleep, amen. But, you know, I kind of like the... The, the feller that I think Brother Winston is telling this about this one guy, his wife said that, he's, and there were, he said that or something, he was out, went outside, kind of walking around looking, and, and said the Lord spoke to him, said, go on to bed, I got it, amen, amen. That's, wouldn't it be nice if we could really live like that, like we used to, that the Lord, you, you know, I think about the old time, you know, you got sick, amen, you, could, you didn't run to the emergency room, you didn't run here and there, you know, they just had to pray about it, Amen. Uh, 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 they didn't. They didn't get their uh, tin cans out with the string and try to, you know, uh, get their neighbors. Amen. We had no telephone, so the, how 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 else was it to get get a hold of anybody? Was call out on the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I'd kind of like to see it back like that. Amen. And I believe we do the will of God. Take it out outside these walls. Start praying for people. Amen and trying to get them all in, love thy enemies, amen, and they will, will come in, amen, amen. Do you have anything, you read that text, it seems like the Lord just kept asking me, what, what you got to say about it, if you go on a different line on this sick and king, or on what you just read, I know you got something, I, I'm pretty sure the Lord said, let Johnny say what he's got to say about this. If I'm out of line, I don't know. Yeah. Right. You go to Acts chapter 23, verse 1. Now, I didn't talk to John or nothing. I just like the Lord. Yeah. The Lord said this. So you have Paul. It says, Paul earnestly beholding the council said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded them and that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee, thy white-walled 
For sittest thou to judge me after the law, and commandest me to be smitten contrary to the law? And they that stood by said, Revilest thy God's high priest? Then said Paul, I wish not, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, Thou shalt not speak evil of the ruler of thy people. Amen. And if you go to Acts 24, 16, it, it carries on in this same conversation. It says, Aaron, do I exercise myself, this is Paul speaking, to always a good conscience, a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. Amen. So for me, it's, it's pretty powerful to see that we can get angry. Even the apostle Paul can get insanely angry but yet he is, he is discerned to the point where he can listen. He can hear from people standing beside him, and he can hear from the word of God to bring him back into line. Because when we step out of line into what, what, what we saw here is a flash of anger in Paul. You, you white Walt, you hypocrite. You punch me in the face and say it's you're judging me on the case of the law and yet you do this against the contrary of the law? You hypocrite. He stepped out of line and he got mad. He got angry. He said, brothers, brothers, did you see what this man did to me? He, he punched me in the face. And he, and he had some little people that, st that stood next to him that said, Paul, you revilest God's high priest. In, in the NLT, it says, he says, I'm sorry, brothers. I didn't know he was the high priest. And then he stepped back into line. And he, he came to a point where God gave him wisdom, and he, he recollected. He recalled in his spirit that says, you never talk evil over the people that rule you. He said, I'm sorry, brothers. I didn't know that. It, it, you have to understand that this is the Apostle Paul. He says, I'm, I'm just like you guys. But I, I preach a different, I preach the resurrection. It said some of them believed and some of them didn't. And they argued. But Paul stepped out, stepped into his old man. He stepped into the old spirit of who he was. And he got angry. And sometimes I know we get angry. I know sometimes we get angry amongst the people that we love the most. And we find ourselves stepping into the old man's shoes. But there is a voice of reason inside you. It might be the voice of reason from a brother who's speaking to you. Can I, can I, can I speak to you for a minute and tell you what's going on, Paul? You're talking bad about the high priest. Amen. You're stepping out of line. This flash of anger is not like you, Paul. It's not what you're supposed to be preaching. It's not what you're supposed to be showing through your life, Paul. And instantly he says, yes, I, I am sorry. I did not realize that. But he was smitten on the face and he could have easily said, did you see what them boys just yeah. did to me? He's probably spitting blood because I promise you they hit him. They didn't just smack him. They hit him. We're facing now, society's trying to sear our conscience to where we can't keep it in line. Yep. The, the uh, and our Constitution, Kentucky, says that we have the right to our conscience. That's what Kim Davis was fighting on. Yep. And that next phrase that you go next to there, talks about the conflict in 16 where I do exercise myself to always have a conscience void of offense toward God and towards men. We can't serve two masters. Amen. Right. When society goes the wrong way, we're, we're, we're facing a test. Yeah. Right. Amen. A hard test. Right. Right. We can't bow down to what, some of, what society's pushing us into. But Paul had a, had a power that was inside him. And it was a power that we need to exercise in our own lives. And it's listen. Listen to people who have good advice. And most importantly, listen to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit inside you that's trying to speak to you, 
trying to invade your conscience with the right ideas, the right thing to say, the right thing to do, and step you back into line. What does the scripture say about your situation? What does the scripture say about your trial? What does the scripture say about your, 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 everything you're going through, everything you're saying, what you're doing to your brothers and sisters, what you're doing to your family members? Are you smiting them on the face? Or are you listening to what the scripture is trying to tell you how to live a righteous and holy life to be in the resemblance of Jesus Christ? That's what this is saying. Will you listen, brother? Can I be that voice of reason is what he's trying to say. The situation you're going through, is it lining up with my scripture? Is, it, is, it, is Jesus the center of the decision? Or is it selfish and prideful? Fits like a glove, don't it, Carter? No. Because what Jesus is trying to get us to is the next level. In that next level, we cannot stay and fight these old demons and with this tactic into another level. And you're saying, what's that level? You, to you to be a better and better and better witness to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That he can speak to you through his word, where you can plant his word in your heart, and you can, and you can disseminate, bring about, change in people's lives through how you live and how you work and how you speak because your words have power and if they're centered on the word you can never go wrong Amen. because Paul was saying I, I've lived this life trying to be void of anything evil towards anybody but when you can step into anger when, when anger starts to enter your world through conflict, through trial or tribulation, evil steps in. And you, you won't build a fire based on the righteousness of God, but you'll build a fire on the righteousness of an anti-God. The, the, the anger will draw you away from the word. Anger is, a, is, a, is an evil. It's, it's not, it, there's nowhere in the scripture that, that anger is biblical on the side of, of righteousness. But so anger be, is what divides us. That the scripture says, be angry and, and sin not. So we need to stop it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. someone punches him in the mouth and 
he gets angry. See, Satan did that. To spin him, make him forget what he was really there to do. But thank God Paul come to himself and he realized, I'm not here to get angry. I'm serving the Lord right now. We all got to watch that. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and close. I've got a couple more little things I'm going to say. But. said and what Johnny said. <coughs> Just hold it on. Yeah, there you go. You hold it. Just hold it. What you see in people is what they want you to see. Okay? Because we don't know where they've been or where they've gone through, whatever they're doing, walking in their footsteps. This is from Jensen Franklin this morning. Hit it right on the nose. Did y'all see Jensen this morning? See? What we're going to face when we go out these walls, when we have our little thing in September, people are going to come and we're going to see this side of them. But if you flip it over, they're filled with emptiness. There's nothing there. They're dirty. They need help. And they're seeking help. You know, they may have been smited somewhere along the way by church people. So it's our turn to flip it back around and show them. Man. You know, yes, Eddie. That don't mean you are a That's right. That's right. That's right. But I just wanted that visual to go along with what they were saying to give us an idea of what we see, but what they're really going through. Just like us. There may be somebody here this morning. We see that side, but you're going through this side. Amen. So that's all I've got. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask them to come. I'm going to ask them, ask them to come to the music. We're going to give all the call as they come to the music. You know, a lot of times it's, I remember when before I got saved, I'd look around, and I could tell you all my neighbors that went to church, I could tell you every fault they had almost. I could, I'm living better than him. I'm living better than him. I wouldn't do what he done. And call and go to church. We probably got people right now that's looking at each one of us. Say, well, how they can they do this or how they can do that? The Bible says, what? Work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. So I'm not here to, I'm not getting up here to serve the Lord for my brother Johnny, my brother Joe. I'm here to serve the Lord for myself, for Jesus Christ, my Savior, and be obedient to do what the Lord tells me to do. Sometimes they just talk about obedient. It's hard to do sometimes. Nobody don't want to hurt nobody. But I think a lot of times, church, we've got to apologize for one another. But to go to someone and apologize is pretty tough. But the Lord gets to dealing with you during the night, you will do it. Amen. You will apologize. I remember when I first got saved. This feller, he was saying, oh, he was talking to one of my workers like a dog. I, I hadn't been saved about a m month or two. I said, babe, you talk to me like that, I'd work your head with a ball bat. <laughs> I went home that night, didn't sleep one wink. I hadn't even started. I was just reading in the New Testament. Lord, give me a scripture in the Old Testament. As I was going out the door, he gave me that scripture. I went back in, didn't know what it was. Pulled my Bible up and read it. I had to go back. I don't notice. I had to go back and apologize. But the the Lord, give me a scripture to take and tell that guy. I could remember a little bit more of them, so I could remember most of the scriptures. So I'd go back and I told him what the Lord, and give him the place. And he remembered that place, and he took it home. And him and his wife, he come back and told me, so me and my wife, we researched, we researched that scripture and looked it up. And he said, what's that mean? And I said, it's pretty simple, that you will have problems in your house 
your, 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 uh, uh, your kids will leave and you will have problems in your house. That man, his, his children left. As soon as they turned uh, 17, 18, they left. And uh, they run off with other men. And him and his wife, he got, he got caught for drunken driving. Him and his wife got a divorce. But finally, but finally, he, he, he went to the house of God, like the other side of that picture, empty, and knelt down and prayed and asked the Lord in his heart. And he, can't, he wasn't working. He'd already got far to work. And he come back at work about, uh, about two weeks after he got saved. He said, I, wanna, I want you to know that I got saved. You know, he come and told me that, and, and me and him had her a little round because he peeped pe 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 people pretty bad. So we got we got to love them anyway, amen? amen? Amen. So I was trying to be good to him all the rest of the time that he was there, and thank God that he gave his heart to the Lord. Go ahead, sis. Well, um, I, I'm thinking about how, you know, we can have joy in our hearts. Everybody wants to have joy. You can have that no matter what happens. And, and the little anachronym for joy is like Jesus, others, you. If we always are thinking our main thought, you know, like we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ, we represent him 24-7. Jesus didn't get angry at people for doing wrong things or bad things. He got angry at the church people who were like hurting other people or doing, you know, you know, like defiling his house or, or but, um, and then if we think about other people, always, you know, what what are you going through? What what may have happened to you? What what? Just other people. Just think about them and think about ourselves last. The why for you. That way, even if somebody ever hurts us, hurts our feelings, or says something mean to us, we can even forget about that and turn it around to compassion, to where you know we understand that people who have been hurt will hurt you. And they're pro it's probably not a personal thing, you know, so we can turn all of our own pain and self-pity around to compassion and stuff. Then we can use that as a clue to when we should pray for people and stuff instead of getting angry at them. We won't even have time to be angry at them because we're more concerned about what Jesus would want us to be doing and how to, you know, be witnesses to the, the lost and the hurting people. Amen. <coughs> Amen. All right. With. The Bible said in uh, something that the Lord dropped in the Spirit, or how long it's going, Deuteronomy 14 and 8. And I'm just going to read it, no big deal. In the Old Testament, pigs were considered unclean. Anything that is unclean gives demon, demonic spirits legal ground or rights to operate. At the particular verse, the people are still under the law because Jesus had not died yet to fulfill the law. Therefore, when the demons wanted one thing to enter into, the pigs were the perfect legal ground for them. Amen? As a believer, the lesson applies to us. Any area of darkness, sin, unclean things, in our lives give Satan and his demons legal rights to grant or ground to operate. It is important to remain pure and holy in the Lord. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's stand. Uh, I thank you for all my help this morning. I didn't know it was going to go this way, but I thank God it did. I like when God's in control. Amen. I tell you what, it just, you know, if you've been coming here and, you know, uh, you can get mad at me because I didn't shake your hand. You can get mad at me. That's all right. But I'm sure Brother Joe will shake your hand. I may be mean and angry and don't shake your hand. Just uh, Brother Joe will get you. Amen. <laughs> Brother Mark will get you. you know, we got so many different ministers, ministers in here, you know. I know the Bible says we got to love one another. We got to be good to one another. But the most important thing is if you come here this morning, you may see di differences between us and different ones, but you will hear the word of God here. And if you're here this morning and you don't know that Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, that's the most important thing, the reason we're here. You know, we need, we need teachers like John and Joe to, to, to help us, uh, you know, to, 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 
to grow deeper and deeper. But also we've got to have ministers here that preaches to the people that don't know Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you here this morning, if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ, maybe someone's hurt you in church, I say you, you give him another chance this morning. You, you, you can make things, you can turn around. If things ain't been going too smooth for you this morning, uh, I think you get a hold of Jesus and, and he'll turn things around for you. We trust in him. Amen. You can, I may fail you. Like I said, I may not shake your hand today and you get mad at me. I may fail you. But Jesus Christ, he'll never fail you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He says in his word, his arm is not too short. His hands, you know, he can't reach down. As they sang, and if you're here this morning and don't know Jesus Christ, we're going to invite you to come. Or you may have got a special need. Maybe you've got children that don't know the Lord and need prayer. Or maybe you've got an addiction that you need to get rid of. It's to be a good place to lay it on the altar. And when you get up, leave it there. Bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. It's prayer time in the house of God. But if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, get someone standing next to you. Get them by the hand and say, I'll go if you'll go with me. Just get them by the hand. of mine like you've never known but then things change and you're down in the valley then don't lose faith
top cafe wind You're up on the mountain Oh, but your top comes so easy When life's at its best But it's down in trials and temptations now that's when faith is really put to the test for the God on the mountain he's still God in the
Somebody's excited, wasn't they? Well, not only is he excited, we got a reason to be excited. There's rejoicing in heaven this morning. Now it's Brother Larry Breeze. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to the family of God. in heaven we got a right to rejoice too amen when somebody prays the prayer of faith and that's what it, it's, it says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved it's it's that's easy it's that simple and he made it that way it's childlike faith you believe in your heart confess with your mouth and that uh, Jesus died on that cross for us and three days later God raised him from the dead thou shall be saved what powerful words and what words we can hold on to amen so good so good. Robin, you got an announcement? Oh, just immediately after church now, they'll be going to the food ministry for 20 minutes in case you need or want anything. I'm going on here to the gym in case you want or need anything from our auction. The youth are selling cupcakes all the way out the door. So 430, be back. We're practicing tonight. We're going to be on JC. Yes. Amen. Amen. Six o'clock tonight, Dr. Randy Caldwell will be ministering here. Uh, we'll basically get right into the service uh, tonight, and uh, because we're going to eat afterwards, and and uh, so uh, invite somebody out. Let them know Randy's been announcing it on his Facebook page. So. Joe, I 
praise the Lord. Your persistent praying has come forth. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Perfect. Amen. All right, let's everybody stand. Let's thank the Lord for this service. Let me speak a blessing over you before we leave. Don't forget, 6 o'clock tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for meeting with us this morning. We thank you for your word. Everything said and done, Lord, we thank you for the prayers that was prayed. And Lord, we thank you for the salvation, the conversion, Lord, to this morning. Everything, Lord, we just want to give you praise for. There's so much to thank you for, so much to praise you for. Lord, we just ask you to watch over us as we go different places. Bring us back tonight at your appointed time. Give us travel mercies. And Father, we give you praise for everything we accomplished today and always. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May be gracious unto you. May lift up his kindness upon you. May give you peace in the name that's above every name, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.